So we're going to deviate from the plans a little bit when it comes to the actual uh, case itself. I've got a 3D printer because I'm using a, a Newtonian. I've not got a big enough print bed. So uh, I've bought this clock and dismantled it for £5. Um, it comes quite nicely with the front cover. I'm going to replace this glass piece, the glass front, with a piece of plastic. We'll cut that in a moment. Uh, and then for the refraction layer, um, we've actually gone ahead and taken an old monitor that was broken pulled it apart and this is absolutely perfect because if we lift off the top screen what we've got in here is various layers of refractive material and not only that right at the bottom we've got a white sheet which i presume is used for optics so we're actually going to cut this and cover up the clock face which i appreciate is white but we're going to make that uh, get rid of obviously the numbers and, and cover that up with the white sheet and then we're going to get the leds put them in place and then layer it up with these refractive sheets so that's the next step got the light diffusing layer now on the CNC bed. I have no idea how this is gonna cut. I've got a feeling it's gonna be unsuccessful. It shattered a bit like glass. But we'll take it slow and we'll have a go. Cutting okay so far. Okay, so that's the diffusion panel. It cut terribly. It was really, really hard. I tried to clean the edges up as best I can. So we're gonna try and fit this now into the clock. Okay, so there's the LED light panel with just the general diffuser on it, the big plastic diffuser. And then if I put these in place, you can see how that makes it much more uniform in size of just holding them slightly, just to keep them down. But you can see how that's really going to improve the situation. So this is where we're up to now. We've got the LEDs fitted with the thick light diffusing layer. We've then got a sheet of the Oplex, which is a perspex uh, sheet that's going to go on first we've then got the mirror like diffuser from the monitor screen that's going to go in there and you can definitely still see the leds i'm just going to spin that around so it is tight in bear with me a second we then got the main light diffusing layer finally on top of that We've got our last sheet of the white acrylic. And now we can't see any of those LEDs. It's a really nice uniform. And then on top of that, we're going to have the black sheet with the bezel. So, Okay, so we've built up the test circuit here. And we've used these LEDs, which are 5 volts. And I've literally just chopped the end off the LED strip. And in there, there is quite simply a black and red wire for your live and for your uh, neutral and for your live and your ground and then even though this looks like a tangle of wires a lot of these are actually just looping wires to to tie together my uh, lives in this back in this top row and my ground in this top row as far as the circuit goes you've got your feather board there which once programmed with the code um, it, it works straight out of the box there's no need to change anything and then on here you've very simply got a ground pin this blue wire at the end You've got a live live pin, which is the furthest right there. You've then got four LEDs in ser in, in a row, uh, sequential pins, and each one of those is tied to ground using one of those resistors. And then the only slightly tricky bit of the circuit, took me a few minutes just to get going, uh, being fairly new to electronics, is the transistor. So the transistor, um, in this orientation, the furthest right pin goes straight to ground. The middle pin is tied to the ground pin of the LED strip, which is here. And then finally, there is just a little bit of a configuration um, with two uh, resistors going to ground as well and also to the control pin. Um, so you'll see there that that, that, that final furthest left pin um, goes to essentially a resistor there, which is going straight to ground. And then also from this side of the resistor, it's going through another smaller resistor. I think that's 330 ohm resistor straight to the uh, feather board pin. So now that this is working, um, we'll just connect it up and we'll see it running in Nina. And then we'll have a go of uh, putting this on the uh, printed circuit board on the PCB. Okay, so when the circuit goes live, 
you get a readout from all LEDs and also you get a battery check. So that was three LEDs uh, showing that there's about three quarters of this battery going. And then the top LED starts to blink. And in Nina, and probably should do with a screenshot here rather than holding the camera, but once you've installed the ASCOM driver, you then see this dark sky wireless flat panel. Uh, you go into Nina, go into flat panel, and when I click connect now, you'll see that this goes solid and I'll get a success connecting here. And then to test the flat panel, if I go and click on toggle, which then turns on the flat panel, there you go. And you can put a value in here. So let's say 100 and set. And you can see there that it dims. So everything looks to be working nicely. The next thing now, the flat panel is looking good. And the next thing now is to transfer this onto our PCB. Okay, so just before assembly now, we've put the components on the PCB, which is nice and straightforward. Literally, you've just got the featherboard, the transistor, the six resistors, the LEDs on the front side, or the back side, whichever we want to say, and then also the capacitor. And then because I've got this clock design, I've just 3D printed this uh, little map. That's actually gonna um, screw in to these screws here on the ends. So I've got that one there and that one there. And then these two bolts are gonna run through the box that's provided in the uh, in the drawings. So I'm still using the original box, but then that's all gonna screw down to the to the clock using these two screw oops, using these two screw holes there and on the other side. And that should be enough just to hold it in place. So that's it now. Time for the final assembly. The only slight difference as well, uh, perhaps laziness, but also just didn't have the parts in and I wanted to get this done. Um, on the original board, he's connected, he's put little connectors on so you can plug the LED strip in, plug the battery strip in and plug the switch in. Uh, and with great respect, uh, I can't imagine I'm ever gonna open this up once it's together is together and I can just desolder these. So I've just soldered those directly to the board rather than to putting plugs on the end. Um, so there we go. Yeah, hopefully uh, it'll be working. So we're gonna get this going now. We'll uh, fit it all up. Okay, so this is the final flat panel. And if we turn it over, that's the back. And we can then use the switch to turn it on. The four LEDs lit show that it's got full power at the moment, and then the blue light lights up. So we're in Nina now, and we're just going to take an in-depth look at using this flat panel, and also using the uh, flat wizard as well. So I'm just first of all making sure that my camera's connected, and then I've gone into the flat panel, uh, and I've selected the correct driver. Um, and then on the first time you use this, you do need to click the little settings icon, and make sure that you are paired to the Bluetooth device so that you're paired to the flat panel. You only have to do this for the very first time you use it. After then, it's just simple case of clicking connect. You can see I can click toggle and immediately test the flat panel and check that it's working. I'm now in the flat wizard and I can set the number of flats that I want to take and just reducing it just for the purpose of this video. I normally take about 40. Uh, and then this is the bit where now, because we're using the flat panel, we can use dynamic brightness and Nina will find out the correct brightness for your flats. So you can see I've started taking the flats now. Uh, the brightness is very high. Uh, we'll get a very white image, very bleached image. It will then reduce the brightness uh, of the flat panel and take another image. And you can see there that the flat panel has gone slightly dimmer. And it will continue to do this until the histogram is about 50%. And if we look at the bottom right hand side of the screen in a moment, the histogram will show up roughly in the middle of that graph. Um, and from there, it knows the correct brightness and it will just continue to take the remaining flats uh, until it's, it's finished. So that's the uh, flat panel finished. Um, it's going to be really useful and I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thanks a lot.